This is Jazz FM. You're listening by mistake. <laughs> this is the breakfast news. The Prime Minister had porridge, the Home Secretary had muesli. <laughs> My piles are giving me so much bloody grit. No. You're listening to Smooth FM. <laughs> <laughs> this is the Somali shipping forecast. Don't go out there! <laughs> this is Magic FM. Pick a frequency, any frequency. <laughs> <laughs> F9, hit. A2, miss. C3, hit. <laughs> that was the battleshipping forecast. <laughs> You're listening to Radio 3. Anyone? Anyone? <laughs> Anyone? Bueller? Bueller? <laughs> <laughs> On Talk Radio today, we've been discussing what a tosser Nick Clegg is. And now on the line, we've got David from central London. <laughs> <laughs> that was God is Dead by Black Sabbath. You're listening to Vatican Radio. <laughs> and at number one this week, Jedward, proving that teenage girls cannot be trusted with money. <laughs> Well, I'm in the eye in the sky with the uh, travel report. I've waited 20 years to file this particular report. If I look down, I can see red lorry, yellow lorry, <laughs> red lorry, yellow... <laughs> <laughs> Don't touch that dial! I'm defrosting a pie. <laughs> <laughs> Next up on Radio 1, Nick Grimshaw. He's not very good, but he's only 28, so he definitely didn't get up to anything in the 1970s. <laughs> Next, Ed Miliband lays out his policies in I'm sorry I haven't a clue. <laughs> <laughs> it's now 10pm on Radio 4. And before the news, here's five minutes of free porn. <laughs> <laughs> OK, the next topic is things you wouldn't hear on a science documentary. My favourite element is helium. I can't speak highly enough of it. <laughs> the solar system is so vast that it could comfortably accommodate your mum. <laughs> the most fascinating thing is, if you really spend enough time looking at the alignment of the stars, your wife will leave you. <laughs> They call it dark matter. Well, whatever it is, I've tried to flush it four times and it's still <laughs> bloody there. The light from this new distant planet takes so long to get here that we're actually seeing things that happened years ago. And that's why scientists have named it Dave. <laughs> Tonight, we're discussing sports science. Is it a real job, or is it just P.E. when it's raining? <laughs> in our next experiment, we're going to prove that putting Dara O'Brien in a room full of young people still doesn't make science interesting. <laughs> oh. Ooh. <laughs> I think we've got the points. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, if we look through the telescope, we can see the biggest black hole ever found. Oh, no, I've left the lens cap on. <laughs> <laughs> Weren't d <-ream> shit? <laughs> Does your granny stairlift work? Well, it's all to do with nanotechnology. <laughs> <laughs> no, Nigel, that's not how you make a test tube, baby. Get your penis out of the test tube. <laughs> so the 
is amazing. Right, so what you're saying is that somewhere, Professor Cox, in a parallel universe, there is a me with hair. That's right, Dara. Ah. Things you wouldn't hear on a fitness DVD. OK, let's get you switching in your own living room. I know you're an illegal immigrant. <laughs> Today we're going to work on our three problem areas. That's bums, tums, and Afghanistan. <laughs> <laughs> Do you want rock hard buns? Then you need to get to Greg's at around five o'clock in the afternoon. <laughs> <laughs> really stretch it out. Come on, really stretch it out. You're nearly there. Can you feel the burn? Can you? Good. Okay, now you've got your leotard on. We can do the exercise. <laughs> <laughs> So that's three minutes in, and it's time to wave goodbye to our American viewers. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, I'm Il McPherson, and welcome to Wanker Size. <laughs> Hello, and welcome to Get Thin on Heroin. <laughs> I got rid of all the extra weight I had when I was pregnant just by leaving him on a stranger's doorstep. <laughs> <laughs> if you find weights really boring, do what I do. Don't wait. <laughs> <laughs> now, I find squats very important because I can't afford to pay my own rent. <laughs> Are you still too big to fit into that dress? Don't worry about it. Just go to Leeds. The women there don't seem to give a shit. <laughs> and now I can completely fit into the bikini. Of course, sometimes my cock flops out. But <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> Welcome to Pilates at Home. All the fun of Pilates without the embarrassment of farting in a church hall. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, and welcome to Dara O'Brien's Bunga Bunga Workout. <laughs> OK, the next topic is... <laughs> unlikely things for a vet to say. Of course your monkey's got diabetes. You've been feeding him Cocoa Pops for 20 years. <laughs> I know it's expensive, Mrs Smith, but if you want your cat put down, you're going to have to make nine appointments. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm afraid uh, Timmy won't be coming out of hibernation soon, and that's because he's not actually a tortoise, he's a Fray Bentos pie. <laughs> So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut open the stomach of your Rottweiler and hopefully I'll have both of us out of here in no time. <laughs> 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 oh, if only they could talk, I'd be in prison. <laughs> <laughs> is we've had to chop off one of Fido's legs, but the good news is you put roller skates on him, that's three million hits on YouTube right there. <laughs> <laughs> You're right, Mrs Thomas, this is the first beaver I've seen. Now, what pet have you brought in? <laughs> the good news is your snake has survived. The bad news is he's never going to walk again. <laughs> Well, sir, if you think this treatment is too expensive, I suggest you get your meerkat to find somewhere cheaper. <laughs> <laughs> well, yes, your horse is a little bit overweight, but it's nothing to worry about. Oh, it's a dog. <laughs> <laughs> we just had the re, uh, we just had the test results back on the cows, and it's it's not good, I'm afraid. They're 10% horse meat. <laughs> I'm afraid it's dead, Mr Forsyth, but I would say maybe you shouldn't have kept it on your head for so long. <laughs> I'm afraid I'm going to have to put your dog down. 
Rover, you're a fat, lazy arsehole who couldn't catch a stick to save his life. <laughs> Mr Johnson, you spoil that dog. Not only are you overfeeding him, but he's quite capable of licking his own balls. <laughs> <laughs> Lines you wouldn't hear in a sci-fi movie. <laughs> Captain's Lodge, start date 2135. It's a Tuesday. <laughs> Actually, uh, Jeremy Carl's just got the DNA results back. And apparently, Luke, I'm not your father. <laughs> Commander Skywalker, bad news. We left R2-D2 outside, stand guard, and the council took him away for emptying. <laughs> I've seen things you people wouldn't believe. I've seen attack ships on fire off the shoulder of Orion. <laughs> I've seen... <laughs> 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 There's a giant satsuma in front of the ship. <laughs> Go to orange alert. <laughs> First, there were snakes on the plane. Now the British remake. Wasp in a car. <laughs> you can't win, Darth. If you strike me down now, I shall become more powerful than... And get off, you prick! <laughs> <laughs> What is it, Captain? I've never seen anything like it in my life. Of course not, Scotty. It's the sun. <laughs> <laughs> Since you have got your laser gun trained on me, I've got a bit of stubborn hair just here. <laughs> Permission to beam down to the Forbidden Planet. No. <laughs> I can see dead people. That's because I'm watching UK TV Gold. <laughs> Here are the sci-fi football results. R2D2. <laughs> C3P. Nil. <laughs> Look at all those fading, dwindling stars forced to eat bugs in a jungle. If you leave our protection, you will almost definitely die. Scotty, do you still want independence? <laughs> <laughs> Luke, I am your father. Go to your room. <laughs> Captain, I don't like it when you call me Spockface. <laughs> To boldly go where no man has gone before. Anne Widdicombe. <laughs> How many Klingons does it take to change a dilithium crystal? <laughs> Ten. One to change it, and the other nine to chastise him for performing such a menial task when he's a member of a proud warrior race. <laughs> <laughs> OK, the next topic is... Unlikely personal ads. I could be the man of your dreams. If you dream of a man who exposes himself to people on trains. <laughs> I'm a cat person. I sleep all day and I bury my poo in the garden. <laughs> For sex with no strings attached, don't shag a puppet. <laughs> Katie Price seeks new husband. Position temporary. Usual terms and conditions apply. <laughs> Looking for love in all the wrong places? Well, you wanted to be a priest. <laughs> Ugly fat bloke. <laughs> Looking for a supermodel with a sense of humour. <laughs> Man prone to violent mood swings seeks lovely woman to go screw yourself. I love you! <laughs> <laughs> Female, 22, 33, 52. One of them's my age. <laughs> Are you feeling lucky, punk? 
agrophobic seeks claustrophobic for doorstep encounters. <laughs> I am Ponus of the planet Testiclon 8. I seek a human female to take my seed. Make a better world for both our planets. <laughs> Dave Croydon. <laughs> Pessimistic man seeks depressed old ladies so as we can have some really shit times today. <laughs> Gorgeous, five foot eleven, black woman, amazing body, great rack. I sort of put it out there. <laughs> I'm a George Clooney look-alike who's looking for a woman with visual impairment. <laughs> Do you like swinging? Meet me down by the swings. <laughs> <laughs> I'm looking for a dominant woman. Tell me to call you. <laughs> Do you like dogs? Good, because I'm small, hairy, and hung like a border terrier. <laughs> Sophisticated, erudite man with fin de siècle tastes. <laughs> Six woman with massive norks. <laughs> man with massive cock. Six woman with large hen to discuss poultry farms. <laughs> Unlikely things to hear on daytime TV. Well, these four date from the early part of last century. Some uh, wear and tear, a little bit of tarnishing there. But uh, please welcome today's Loose Women! <laughs> welcome to Channel 4 Daytime. Or as you said to your boss this morning, working from home. <laughs> Well, coming up next, two programmes you don't want to get confused. Escape to the countryside and bargain. Hang on. <laughs> <laughs> the next programme is Pointless. It's the Jeremy Kyle Show. <laughs> coming up, Teletubbies Uncut. Yes, you're going to get to see Tinky Winky's Winky <laughs> and Dipsy's La La. <laughs> Next, Judge Judy. I have. She's shit. <laughs> Hello and welcome to Let's Decorate the Shit Out of This House. <laughs> this week we're decorating the shit out of a three-bed semi in Orpington. So let's do it! Let's decorate the shit out of this house! <laughs> Next up, another property mm. program, which is pretty offensive when we consider you're all unemployed. <laughs> Hello, welcome to this morning. Uh, I'm Philip. I'm a man on television, so I can go grey and look older. Uh, this is Holly, one wrinkle, and she's finished. <laughs> <laughs> So David wanted to retire by the sea, so we advised him to buy in Norwich, because by the time he's retired, <laughs> the sea will have come to him. <laughs> Next on Flog It, the team meet their greatest challenge yet, a dead horse. <laughs> and now a trip round Dar O'Brien's head in Hair Hunters. <laughs> Next up, the Austrian version of Cash in the Attic. It's family in the basement. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and welcome to Let's Cook the <laughs> Shit Out of Some Dinner! <laughs> <laughs> and now on BBC One, let's make an appointment with doctors. If we phone now, we may be able to see them next Thursday. <laughs> Welcome to A Place in the Sun, the show that's for people who aren't sure if they want to live in Britain or move abroad. First up, Abu Qatada. <laughs> 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 
Next up on ITV3, it's a cutting-edge American drama. I'm only joking, it's Taggart again. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, and welcome to... I'm gonna sell these antiques if it fucking kills me! <laughs> OK, the next topic oh. is... Oh. Unlikely things to hear in hospital. I'm afraid we've lost him, but in my defence, Dr. Dre is just a stage name. <laughs> <laughs> right. I'm afraid you have had a stroke, so can you now take your hand out of my trousers? <laughs> <laughs> the good news is I can save your leg. The bad news is I can't save the rest of you. His heart stop! Quick! Get the different different Ah, oh, sorry, he's dead. <laughs> <laughs> Look, who's the doctor here? Me or you? Seriously, I've been awake for so long I can't even tell anymore. <laughs> okay, I think we should remove the mole. How did it get up there? Welcome to Ashford Hospital. Why not join me in playing pregnant or fat? <laughs> <laughs> now, students, we know the operation has been a failure because we heard a buzzing and his nose lit up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Welcome to the cardiology unit. Boom! You've got to leave this afternoon, Mrs. Smith. We need your bed. I'm shagging a nurse in it at four o'clock. <laughs> your husband is in a stable condition. His room's filthy and there's horse shit everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> you could look at it that way, or you could think of it as gaining a hook. <laughs> <laughs> To him, that's my former husband. Well, because you asked me to bring in my ex, Ray. <laughs> <laughs> I'm afraid we're a bit short of time today. Do you mind if we pull the sheet over you now? Eh, <laughs> 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 hey, I'm sorry, we're all full up at A&E. We're going to have to send you to B&Q. <laughs> You'll just feel a small prick, and then I'll pull my trousers up and won't bother you again. <laughs> now, what seems to be the pro Fucking hell! <laughs> OK. Questions omitted from this year's exams. Using pie, distract the fat kid next to you so as you can copy his answers. <laughs> Using only the English language, Write something. <laughs> History. Henry the Fourth, Henry the Fifth, Henry the Seventh. Which was the greatest Hoover the caretaker ever had? <laughs> <laughs> Maths. Robert has 400 stamps. He liked to put them in 12 different albums. He wants to have them equally in each album. How many friends does Robert have? <laughs> Do you know the way to San Jose? <laughs> Religious studies. If two men have been married for ten years, for how long will they burn in hell for? <laughs> if the fluid has been flowing at 21 litres a minute for 15 minutes, what on earth is wrong with my bladder? <laughs> Fill your name at the top of the exam paper. If it's Tyler or Charmaine, get up, leave the school and never come back. <laughs> <laughs> Using only the mass of the ass and the angle of the dangle, calculate the measure of the measure. <laughs> <laughs> yes. If a man travels 12 miles each day to buy a loaf of bread, 
How long before he realises that living in the countryside is shit? <laughs> Are multiple choice exams too easy? A. Yes. <laughs> Optician's final exam. What do you think are the main causes of short sightedness? And now? How about now? <laughs> and now? What about now? And now? <laughs> Media studies, trick question one. Name a business like show business. <laughs> Geography. What is to blame for climate change? A, the sunlight, B, the moonshine, C, <laughs> the good times, or D, the boogies? <laughs> OK, the next topic is... Things a weather forecaster would never say. The sun will come out <laughs> tomorrow. <laughs> Bet your bottom dollar. Buzz. <laughs> <laughs> and these are the worst floods since records began, which was last year when all the records were destroyed in that flood. <laughs> <laughs> uh, don't, this is a map. I'm not a giant. <laughs> yeah. It's going to be a bit blowy today. It's my birthday and my wife promised me one. <laughs> Later on, it's going to be raining cats and dogs because a bomb's gone off in Battersea. <laughs> <laughs> well, it was cloudy earlier. I think I may have a urine infection. <laughs> Well, hot, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> well, it was a frosty start for some of us this morning, cos I came in pissed again and accidentally got in bed with my mother-in-law. <laughs> well, you'll be glad to know that scientists have finally explained why we've been enduring this rather long spell of disappointing weather. Apparently, we live in Britain. <laughs> <laughs> and over the next three days, uh, we will see uh, some spells of rain. The entrails never lie. <laughs> <laughs> Things should be getting a lot cooler. I've just made friends with a black man. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm afraid you're going to get wet later on. I'm following you, and I've got a bucket. I'm sure the ladies are going to be wearing skimpy bikinis tomorrow. It could reach 90 degrees, which is not bad for a man my age. <laughs> <laughs> it is going to be a scorcher, so guys, you might as well just staple your balls to the inside of your thigh, cos those bad boys are going nowhere. <laughs> Thank you very much, Dave. Yeah. Pretty easy report on things that have already happened. Now, predicting the future. <laughs> <laughs> and now the shipping forecast. Dogger, car park, my penis rising slowly. <laughs> <laughs> Extracts from DVDs that would never sell. Welcome to exercise for manic depressives. Down. <laughs> Welcome to this how to use a DVD instruction DVD. <laughs> First, put this DVD in the slot for the DVD. <laughs> Steven Spielberg, circumcision. The director's cut. <laughs> Welcome to the suffragette story with me, Miley Cyrus. <sighs> Ready to get fit, ladies? It's Johnny Depp, Pilates of the Caribbean. 
The main point of this self-help DVD is that only you can help you. No need for me, then. Thanks for the 20 quid. <laughs> Hello, welcome to Funeral Etiquette. When's the right time to fart? <laughs> we are in Africa filming the continent's biggest predator, Madonna in Malawi. <laughs> welcome to the best of German. Who do you think you are? So, your grandfather was a... OK, we'll leave it there. <laughs> uh, welcome to the best of Test Match Special. That one works. That really helps. This is the DVD you've been waiting for. All the tweets of Alan Sugar read out loud by Stephen Hawking. <laughs> Welcome to Filthy Dirty Nurses 2, the rise of MRSA. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, I'm Ed Byrne. Welcome to Wank Yourself Skinny. <laughs> Work yourself thin with me, teen sensation Stuart Francis. <laughs> It's the DVD we've all been waiting for. Two politicians discussing Rwanda. <laughs> OK, the next topic is... Unlikely things to hear on a motoring programme. <coughs> Listen to that deep, throaty roar of the man I've just run over. George Michael says he's never driven a car that's handled so well on the pavement. <laughs> now, I would describe this car as being very nippy, but apparently I'm not allowed to say that. I have to say it's made in Japan. <laughs> <laughs> I'm about to shag a bloke. Welcome to Ride My Pimp. Women everywhere have come together to announce their favourite car. It's the red one. <laughs> this car has a fail-safe anti-theft device. It's a Vauxhall Corsa. <laughs> <laughs> First, second, third, fourth, yes, all my wives have divorced me because I'm such a twat about cars. Yeah. Car and it gives a shit. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> this car is actually owned by Jeremy Clarkson, which is why I'm running my key along it now. <laughs> my first impression is that the dashboard layout is actually quite unorthodox and very minimalist. There doesn't seem to be a steering. Uh, actually, I'm sitting in the back. <laughs> <laughs> Ah, it still has that new hitchhiker smell. <laughs> I don't know about you, but I think it'd be quite nice to walk today. <laughs> <laughs> These sounds have been surprisingly low for the new Renault Bell End. <laughs> <laughs> this car has been modified for the American market. It's got six cup holders, a sandwich stand and a small rotisserie attached to the dashboard. <laughs> <laughs> this week on Top Gear, we're going to be talking about some penises. Cars! We're talking about cars! <laughs> cars! Oh, cars! <laughs> this car's personalised management system remembers who you are and how you drive. This morning, it locked me out and told me to fuck off. <laughs> on likely things for a sports commentator to say. And the starting pistol's gone off, and Oscar Pistorius has got his arms in the air, <laughs> claiming his innocence already. <laughs> well, good news here in Flushing Meadow. Murray has broken Djokovic. Both legs, one arm. He won't recover from that. <laughs> 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 
Oh, clearly that's a dive by Tom Daly. <laughs> <laughs> so it's one all at half time, and uh, oh, sorry, I'm finding it hard to concentrate here. Gareth Southgate has just had me in absolute stitches. <laughs> <laughs> And that's an unfortunate wardrobe malfunction for the Ukrainian women shop putter there as a bollock pops out. <laughs> well, oh, do you know, I've completely forgotten when England won the World Cup. <laughs> <laughs> 130 kilograms, this would be a world record, but this small Peruvian is determined to swallow it and get it through customs. <laughs> <laughs> and as he approaches the corner at 200 miles an hour, they really need to check out this cyclist for drugs. <laughs> <laughs> and as a mark of respect, the Great Britain water polo team will be wearing armbands. <laughs> Croquet does not get better than this. <laughs> well, my watch has three additional minutes. Don't buy a Rolex from a street market. <laughs> Hello, I'm Michael Owen. Welcome to the millions of you watching on BT Sport. <laughs> and he's got four off one ball. There's a lot of children that Lance Armstrong has fathered. <laughs> and the sumo wrestler grunts as his opponent enters the ring. Pretty sure that move's illegal. <laughs> well, it's 1.30 and the covers are still on. Kevin Peterson simply won't get out of fucking bed. <laughs> And Tiger Woods is going for his third hole of the afternoon. Surely by now he should have left the hotel. <laughs> <laughs> and welcome to the 2020 Tokyo Olympic sailing competition. Oh my God, Godzilla! <laughs> <laughs> okay, the next topic is commercials that never made it to air. I wipe my ass with Colgate. <laughs> And now, I've got a ring of confidence. <laughs> if it tastes like butter and spreads straight from the fridge, you've probably had a power cut. <laughs> <laughs> Condoms, because if she'd sleep with you, she'd sleep with anyone. <laughs> Ryanair, because I'm worth shit. <laughs> As leader of the Labour Party, I always like to look my best. It's very important to me to have a smooth finish, which is why I use the Mac 4. As I often say, that was a close shave, wasn't it, Grommy? <laughs> Frosty is there. They're all right. <laughs> New BG from Garnier. Exfoliates, hydrates, epilates, urinates. Probably not that last one. <laughs> <laughs> unlimited minutes, unlimited text, unlimited music downloads. Yes, it's our new twat on a train tariff. <laughs> <laughs> Have a break. Have a wank. Maybe she's born with it. In which case, I probably shouldn't take the piss. Bekele <laughs> <laughs> has to walk for five miles every day for fresh water. That's why she ought to be thinking about the new Mazda. <laughs> <laughs> Coco Chanel. So it's bloody horrible. I'm sticking to Horlicks. <laughs> Lidl, because life didn't work out as you planned. <laughs> uh, 
Hi, I'm Kevin Bacon, doing an ad on British TV. What happened? <laughs> Have you got that bloated, uncomfortable feeling in your stomach? Then try going for a shit. <laughs> The DFS furniture sale is... is not currently on. <laughs> this Christmas, get mocked a week on DVD, featuring all the regulars. Dara O'Brien. And who are these videos? Andy Parsons. <laughs> Will Milton Jones. Um, and, of course, don't forget Mickey Flanagan. East End of London. And, of course, everybody, very good. Chris Allison. <laughs> <laughs> Lines you wouldn't hear in a blockbuster film. My name is Maximus Decimus Meridius. Father to a murdered son, husband to a murdered wife. Please leave a message after the turn. <laughs> you're going straight to hell. I think you're going straight to DVD, mate. <laughs> <laughs> OK, Iron Man. You win. You do the ironing. <laughs> Is it a bird? Yes. <laughs> Lord of the Rings, UK version. People come from the Shires to go on a very long journey on the Northern Line to Morden. <laughs> and when they get there, it's shit. <laughs> <laughs> If you push George W. Bush into that vat of concrete, that sets a very bad precedent. <laughs> Don't take me on. I am Wolverine. And these are my friends. Jolene, Windeline, and Trampoline. <laughs> Gollum, that wasn't the ring I was referring to. <laughs> Would you please get your finger out of my precious? <laughs> Should, should we just check that Bond is dead before we continue with the plan? <laughs> God, Jerry Maguire, you have me at get in the van! Yoda, have you ever been tested for dyslexia? <laughs> if I come back in another life as a disposable razor, I'll be big. <laughs> There's something in the tractor beam. Ed? <laughs> <laughs> OK, next up it is. Unlikely things for Andy Murray to think. <laughs> <laughs> I know his championship point. I could really do with the poo. <laughs> <laughs> well, at least now if one Wimbledon, they'll stop making fun of me on television. <laughs> Jim, look what I've just won! <laughs> hey! I wonder if my mum's watching today. <laughs> of course she is. <clears throat> She's always watching. <clears throat> could break yourself. Or I could break his fucking legs. <laughs> I remember when I used to train. <laughs> what is that? <laughs> He's in the room. <laughs> so, <laughs> I remember when I used to train in Scotland. I was a lot more unhealthier. I used to serve with a potato <laughs> instead of a bowl so I could have lots of chips afterwards. <laughs> if Kim really likes tennis. <laughs> Wish Kim had shut up. Oh, Ed Barney's so funny. He's so good. <laughs> <laughs>
When are Athena going to make a poster of me scratching my ass? <laughs> Why do I spend my life <laughs> trying to hit a fuzzy green apple <laughs> with a snowshoe? <laughs> God, it's great having an enormous penis. <laughs> <laughs> I think I just saw Ivan Lendl raise his eyebrow. <laughs> that means he's just ejaculated. <laughs> Wimbledon's all very well. I wish I was playing farming simulator. <laughs> Venus has the arse, Serena's got the tits. <laughs> <laughs> I must remember to keep talking in the Scottish accent. It's very hard when you live in Surrey. <laughs> <laughs> Five sets. That should be enough underwear. <laughs> <laughs> Things you wouldn't hear on a DIY show. Many people have written to us asking how you can make your house greener. Simple. Paint it green. <laughs> And there it is, a perfect patio, and the police won't suspect a thing. <laughs> no, no, don't bother putting the kettle on there. We'll crack on with the work straight away. <laughs> the walls are plastered, and I'm a little bit shit-faced too, to be honest. <laughs> ah. <laughs> Welcome to Bollywood Does DIY, episode number one. Change the light bulb. <laughs> <laughs> I'll do that. That's right, huh? <laughs> I'm Nick Knowles, and no matter how many DIY programs I make, I'll never be as famous as my sister Beyonce. <laughs> <laughs> this week on Grand Designs, two more middle class tossers piss away their life savings on some glorified Wendy house. <laughs> After three hours of sawing, six hours of hammering, and sanding all day, it's done. Finally, your neighbours have moved out. <laughs> <laughs> so for the best finish, rub vigorously up and down with a piece of sandpaper, but be warned, you may get a very sore penis. <laughs> <laughs> We've managed to double the price of this house in Middlesbrough. We put 20 quid in the biscuit tip. <laughs> Uh, Jen's parents really helped us out with the budget on this project by dying. <laughs> so, drill the pilot hole, take the plasterboard fixing, but before you countersink the button, ask yourself this. Is it any wonder my wife left me for a table magician from Macclesfield? <laughs> We sandblasted several layers of varnish off, but sadly, there was very little of the real Dale Winton left. <laughs> this week, John from Peterborough successfully put a roll of wallpaper up himself, so we're taking him to hospital. <laughs> We've got 24 hours to renovate Sharon's house. Let's start by smashing her back doors in. <laughs> Sarah Beanie has helped Andy convert his semi into a full boner. <laughs> <laughs> OK, the next topic is... Unlikely lines from a romantic novel. He gazed into her eyes and said, Is it better with this lens or this lens? <laughs> Godfrey looked behind the fridge. He was in luck. She was a slut. <laughs> Will you make me the happiest man on earth? Will you marry me? 
Will you change your name? Will you become the next Mrs. Goaty Bollocks? <laughs> <laughs> Yes, the earth did move for me. I think they must have started fracking. <laughs> As he looked into her eyes for the last time, he whispered in her ear, always remember, we'll always have the bins behind Morrison's. <laughs> <laughs> Romeo, Romeo, 5-5, five, five, Alpha Zulu, Tango, Grey Skoda, Octavia, last seen heading towards M6. <laughs> I've been looking for you my whole life. iPhone maps are crap. <laughs> he made love to her like no man had ever done before. It was so intense, she dropped her chips. <laughs> <laughs> Fancy a coffee, she said. He realised his luck was in and started taking his clothes off, at which point he got kicked out of Starbucks. <laughs> They skipped hand in hand through the wood. Oh, look, he said, a yew tree. How appropriate. <laughs> <laughs> he was a strapping officer from World War I. She was disappointed with uniformdating.com. <laughs> Daisy was everything he looked for in a woman. Pissed with low self-esteem. <laughs> She danced as if no one was watching, but people were watching, and she looked like a twat. <laughs> At last, I have found you. I have found you. Is it really you? Are you Wally? <laughs> Does this story have a happy ending? He asked her. She snapped back. Happy ending, $50. <laughs> Unlikely small ads. Do you want a larger penis? Beach volleyball tonight on BBC One. <laughs> <laughs> For sale, 400 jars of mayonnaise would suit the sort of person who's not that fussed by best before end dates. <laughs> <laughs> For sale, one pack of polos unopened, mint condition. <laughs> Sperm donors wanted. Please come quickly. <laughs> For sale, horse would make excellent pet or pate. <laughs> wanted. Someone to kill my dad, so I have an X Factor backstory. <laughs> <laughs> Lost. Boomerang. Last Thursday. Somewhere. Oh, no, it's coming back to me now. <laughs> <laughs> For sale. Dwarf jacuzzi. Could also be used as a foot spa. <laughs> For vasectomies, liposuction and all small cosmetic operations, call Phil, the overambitious tree surgeon. <laughs> <laughs> Cleaning lady. Eight pounds per hour or until lady is clean. <laughs> Wanted specimen lessons. <laughs> Do you want your house to smell nice and spice up your sex life? Then why not try Glade butt plugins? <laughs> Goodbye, Dad. Rest in peace. And perhaps if you hadn't gambled away all our money, this would be in obituaries. <laughs> <laughs> Wanted. New subject for scenes we'd like to see. <laughs> <laughs> the next topic is... <laughs> on life of things to hear on Crime Watch. The police have said it's OK for the public to approach the gunman as he's sawn off the wrong end of the <laughs> shotgun. <laughs> <laughs> Hopkins has committed various food hygiene offences and there is now a bounty on his head. 
<laughs> and now, a case of Grand Theft Auto. Someone has stolen the case of my Grand Theft Auto. <laughs> the victim was marched to the cash point and made to take out £300. That's the last time he forgets his wife's birthday. <laughs> Good night, and remember, don't shave white bears. No, that's not it. <laughs> we believe the occult to be involved in this crime. This is the victim's phone, and the last number is 666. Hang on, it's upside down. <laughs> <laughs> Were you at wait? Oh, fuck that. Um, <laughs> Were you at Yates? Oh, my God, that's a different... <laughs> Yes. Well, fuck him. Yeah. <laughs> Were you in Weatherspoons? <laughs> <laughs> Do that one again in a minute, I think. Uh, <laughs> a computer fraudster this week got away with nine million nectar points. Police are looking for a disappointed man with one new wine glass. <laughs> <laughs> Well, that's all we've got time for on Crime Watch. We've talked about some serious things, but don't forget, don't have... <laughs> Sometimes victims of crime don't even know they've been robbed because they use the items taken so infrequently. Take Dara O'Brien. Burglars stole his legs six months ago. <laughs> Were you at Yates's Wine Lodge? <laughs> unbelievable. Genuinely unbelievable. <laughs> Were you at Yates's Wine Lodge? <laughs> I can't bloody believe it! I can't believe my bloody eyes! <laughs> More info on that post office robbery. They charged me £4.50 to send a parcel second class. <laughs> No. <laughs> this afternoon, £10,000 worth of cocaine was stolen. Can whoever took it put it back in my dressing room? <laughs> yeah, no, I don't know who took it. Yeah. No, I don't. <laughs> <laughs> well, we hope that reconstruction jogged a few memories. If not, well, we've needlessly shot four more people. <laughs> Things you wouldn't hear during an election campaign. I know we didn't follow through on all that bollocks we said before, but this time we really mean it. <laughs> <laughs> we in the Green Party think we've had a cracking election. Nobody's voted for us, but they've put all the election literature from us in the correct recycling bin. <laughs> <laughs> we will get rid of obesity by making the doors to chip shops really narrow. <laughs> I visited a factory today and the man let me ride on the forklift. It was good. <laughs> we are not a racist party, though we are throwing a racist party tonight for Nigel's birthday. <laughs> Farage, this is my bunk bed. You keep on the top bunk. <laughs> For goodness sake, Boris, when we said press the flesh with the electorate, we meant shake hands. <laughs> I'm probably going to vote Lib Dem. <laughs> I think the best way for me to explain why you should vote Conservative is with this rap. <laughs> Nick Clegg has demanded a recount. Here we go. One. Happy now. <laughs> the public have spoken, and they said that I'm a knob. <laughs> we will shorten the waiting list for eye operations by building hospitals on the far side of busy roads. <laughs> 
We uh, plan to replace the glass ceiling for women with something much easier to clean. <laughs> OK, the next topic is unlikely film trailers. <laughs> One man <laughs> fights his greatest peril. Laryngitis. <laughs> Troy, certificate 15. If you're too young, why don't you make a giant wooden adult? <laughs> <laughs> Jennifer Aniston and Adam Sandler in. Well, wow, the matter is, it's going to be shit anyway. <laughs> A UKIP film presentation, 101 Damn Asians. <laughs> Tom Cruise in the most ludicrous sci-fi thriller yet, a Scientology documentary. <laughs> this summer, Russell Crowe is punching people randomly in the face. <laughs> From the makers of Kaka One. Oh, oh! <laughs> Kaka Two. <laughs> Do you want to build a snowman? Do you want to have the words to let it go in your head all the time until you die? Then come see Frozen. <laughs> I dare you! <laughs> Four. You'll be amazed at how many problems can be solved by a big man with a massive hammer. <laughs> <laughs> I Can't Read Productions presents Salmon Fishing in the Seamen, Yemen. <laughs> <laughs> Look, an ancient African city from the makers of Timbuk One. <laughs> <laughs> Russell Crowe stars as Bob Marley. The accent's so offensive, you won't even care that he blacked up. <laughs> no, this isn't the day the earth stood still. It's just that you're in Norfolk. <laughs> Tom Cruise. Explosions. A flash of boob. That'll do you. <laughs> <laughs> Despicable Me 3, now starring as the arch-villain Gru, Dara O'Brien. <laughs> it looks like a runner bean, only smaller. From the makers of Mange 1. <laughs> told you to blow the bloody door off. In cinemas now, the Oscar Pistorius story. <laughs> Things you won't hear at the World Cup. <laughs> no one's guaranteed a start in this England team. The only thing that's nailed on is Wayne Rooney's hair. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that was a horrible two-footed lunge, but it was the only way. I could shut Phil Neville up. <laughs> and now our cameraman is going to pick out some of the planer girls in the crowd. <laughs> <laughs> Let's have a look at possession. Yes, seven Colombians have been arrested for it. <laughs> hang on, hang on, hang on. It's not very high side. So it's just this one side is doing it all the time. That's really unfair. I'm so sorry, right? You two are just, you're kind of hogging it a bit. So for the rest of the round, I'm sorry. You're just going to have to. <laughs> Things you won't hear at the World Cup. Dun 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 dun
There's little doubt now that Cristiano Ronaldo is one of the world's all-time greatest twats. <laughs> Welcome to Sugarloaf Mountain, the hardest level on Candy Crush. <laughs> <laughs> and that's a very soft tackle, as Pele hasn't taken his tablets yet. <laughs> Is he the finished article? That's the question. He did very well against Italy, but Sterling has traditionally performed very badly against the dollar and the yen. <laughs> and now we go over live for Nigeria against the Ivory Coast and our commentator, Ron Atkinson. <laughs> you join us here in Brazil where it's still fucking well up. <laughs> Who's heard what's going on in Iraq? <laughs> <laughs> There's six Brazilians in the wall and two in the foundations. That's the Mafia for you. <laughs> Four years later, Ooh. Paul the Octopus is back. And what a stew he made. <laughs> Andre Pirlo, the only player in world football to be named after the Palestinian Liberation Organisation. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. OK. The next topic is on lighter things to hear on a cookery programme. No, 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 that's a flower, Nigella. <sighs> <laughs> You've got to be very careful when handling raw meat. But if your wife does walk in, close the laptop, pull up the trousers, <laughs> and feign ignorance. The thing to remember when making your own pesto is you're wasting your time. <laughs> so, pop in a lemon, shove in the stuffing, sew up the mouth, and that should keep Greg Wallace quiet for a bit. <laughs> No, I'm afraid those aren't bacon bits. I've just got a bit of eczema at the moment. If you add vodka into the tomatoes, it really brings out the flavour. And if you add it to your wine, you can pass out before the kids get home. <laughs> you should be able to get the ingredients for this anywhere. They are goat's horn, chervil, and the frozen tears of an elf. <laughs> Anthony Royal Thompson, today we're going to be needing salmon, noodles and parsley. So I'm going to nip down to Tesco and shove up my jumper. <laughs> That's enough cooking. Next up, we've got some twat trying to flog a book. Mmm. <laughs> <laughs> Does anyone know what's happening in Iraq? <laughs> Welcome to Chinese Meals in Minutes. I'll have a 19 <laughs> and some corn crackers. So, alternatively, it's Gas Mark 4 for 20 minutes. You're watching Dignitas Television. <laughs> <laughs> this asparagus smells delicious. Now, imagine what it tasted like when I ate it yesterday. <laughs> After MasterChef, Celebrity MasterChef, and MasterChef The Professionals, now it's MasterChef, the only five people in Britain who've not been on MasterChef. <laughs> <laughs> We'd like to apologise for the misprint in this week's Radio Times. Paul Hollywood is, in fact, a massive cook. <laughs> We only use the freshest ingredients, so this is Daisy, and this is a stun gun. <laughs> <laughs> On likely things to hear in a school assembly. <laughs> it's your own time you're wasting, so please think twice about choosing media studies as an option. <laughs> <laughs> we are not involved in extremism, and any suggestion we are is deeply offensive to us all here of the Jihadi Death of the West Academy. <laughs> Congratulations to the Year 7 football team who beat England. 
There are two new girls in the school today, uh, thanks to Louise in Year 9, who's just had twins. <laughs> Uh, new school rule from next term, there will be running in the corridors because uh, we've had to sell off the gym. <laughs> uh, just this morning, we confiscated a bag of cannabis and now we're asking all students to come forward if they've got Pringles. <laughs> Good news for last year's leavers. We have four at Durham, four at Edinburgh, four at Bristol, and you can't find a better selection of prisons than those. <laughs> And now for show and tell, and here is Miles with his cheese collection. <laughs> <laughs> Congratulations to the first 11 who yesterday beat St Christopher's 37-0. Uh, St Christopher's is an intensive care unit, but nonetheless, <laughs> well done. <laughs> Well, I'm really sad to be uh, leaving you as your maths teacher. I, I, I've got no idea why I've been made redundant because I've always felt like I've given 110%. <laughs> Just a note for 5D. When I said that Thomas should be in a blazer, I didn't mean set him on fire. <laughs> ah. So, uh, Ofsted inspection this morning. So, uh, Burke's off. <laughs> Now, I know today is no school uniform day, Barry, uh, but we were hoping that you would wear something else. <laughs> and now the register is the reason that Mr Smith cannot be here at the school today. <laughs> so if ever you feel the need to do drugs, have a word with the supply teacher. <laughs> OK, the next topic is commercials that never made it to air. Come to Trago Mills. We got peacocks and everything. <laughs> We've got surprises in store. The escalator's broken and the staff know fuck all. <laughs> Dignitas. It's not au revoir. <laughs> Have you had an accident that wasn't your fault and has ruined your life? Next time, use Durex. <laughs> Try uniform dating, because with the way government cuts are going pretty soon, it could be the quickest way to get a policeman to your house in an emergency. <laughs> If you can find it cheaper anywhere else, tell us and we'll burn their shop down. <laughs> the DFS sale has ended. <laughs> Have you been injured whilst doing voluntary work? Well, it's your lookout, isn't it? Hmm? <laughs> The Dyson hand dryer. The perfect way to drown out the sound of somebody having a shit. <laughs> Papa? Papa? No, I'm sorry, Nicole, we've lost him. <laughs> Buy little wine, because poor people shouldn't have to drink cider. Steven Gerrard drinks Lucasaid. This has been a Red Bull commercial. <laughs> <laughs> News International. When you talk, we listen. <laughs> <laughs> to qualify for second meerkat toy, <laughs> Alexander has invaded Ukraine. <laughs> Milk. Try and forget it came out of a cow's tits. <laughs> Have you booked Joe Hart to advertise your product? Have you paid for advertising space until the end of the World Cup? Then you may be entitled to compensation. <laughs> Things a sports commentator would never say. A 
apologies. Uh, the sport you're watching is apparently squash. And not, as I said earlier, tennis in prison. <laughs> I'm sorry, you don't need a lip reader to see what he said after that challenge. He said, fuck off. <laughs> <laughs> 180! This man is rubbish at golf. Meow! <laughs> Meow! <laughs> Meow! <laughs> He's clearly hurt his knee. <laughs> Italy have had three shots in the second half. Tetanus, rabies and hepatitis. <laughs> and here come the Coxless Four so the women's tennis doubles can begin. <laughs> <laughs> and as we wait for the final of the butterfly, it's hard to believe that just yesterday all these competitors were still caterpillars. <laughs> And there's a new event here at the Commonwealth Games in Glasgow. Yes, get ready for shouting at your own reflection in a shop window. <laughs> wow, unbelievable service. Three full bars on T-Mobile. <laughs> <laughs> and there's been a nasty clash in the Nigeria-Brazil game. Lime green with yellow. <laughs> <laughs> For those of you who want to watch the equestrian events, get your butler to press the red button now. <laughs> Welcome to the Nazi Pro-Am Golf Tournament. Hitler, as usual, is in the bunker. <laughs> <laughs> Wayne Rooney has managed the full 90. Previously, his eldest was 76. <laughs> And the Queen takes the bishop. This is turning out to be quite the royal wedding. <laughs> <laughs> and Suarez is being substituted. He's not injured, he's just full. <laughs> <laughs> what an incredible backhand there from the Qatari president. <laughs> <laughs> All right, the next topic is... Unlikely lines from a thriller. We meet at last, Mr. Bond. I'm from the Child Support Agency. <laughs> I will look for you. I will find you. And when I do, you count to ten and try and find me. <laughs> the story about the man that was killed getting a blowjob. Die hard. I have your wife, and unless you give me fifteen million dollars, I will give her back to you. <laughs> Someone in here is the killer. Is it John? Is it Sally? Or is it that massive bear? Yeah, it's definitely semen. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let me talk to the Navy SEALs. Oink, oink. They were strangers on a train, and they remained that way because they were British. <laughs> Um, the cause of death is unknown, but his last words were, Parachutes of a pussy! <laughs> <laughs> There's a mole in our organisation. Toad, ratty, badger. Any idea who it might be? <laughs> <laughs> you are too late. Too late. Look at the timer. In 15 seconds. My ready meal will be ready. <laughs> See? Ha! 
hello to my little friend, Alan. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> the truth! You can't handle the truth! So thank you for signing up to the Mail Online website. <laughs> And that was the horrible moment that the comedian realised it wasn't a good thing to look like an Asian Rolf Harris. <laughs> Unlikely things to hear at the dentist. I think you may have to wear braces. It's just that you're very fat and your trousers keep falling down. <laughs> I'm just a bit surprised at all. When I said, uh, spit it out, I wasn't expecting you to say you were shagging my wife. <laughs> Hello, uh, is that Mr. Chang? We need to change your appointment. No, we can do 2.15 or 2.45. <laughs> Welcome to Dick Van Dyke, the dentist. I'm afraid it's worse than bad breath. You've got supercalifragilistic extreme halitosis. <laughs> I wouldn't say that your root canal is in a bad way, but I've just found a shopping trolley in it. <laughs> do you want a lollipop for being such a brave boy? Of course you do. That's why your teeth look like cheesy what's it, you little prick. <laughs> and now, if you inhale the gas and try and guess what I had for breakfast. <laughs> Yep, you're right. They are false. Had a good feel while she was unconscious. <laughs> no, don't worry. That's not the sound of the drill. It's just that my reception is a scouser. <laughs> the dental hygienist will see you soon. She's just going for a shit. <laughs> Upper right six, lower left seven. Sorry, I'll be with you as soon as I finish this game of battleships. <laughs> Can I think of a celebrity whose veneers I'd like to copy? Um, probably Princess Monaco of Kent. <laughs> <laughs> Why well, do I want a crown? Well, I'm Princess Monaco of Kent. <laughs> This is most unusual, madam. You don't seem to have any teeth at all. What's that? You're here for a smear test? That's next door. <laughs> <laughs> OK, the next topic is... <laughs> the next topic is... Unlikely lines from a children's book. And Sleeping Beauty slept for a hundred nights. In fairness, it had been a massive bender. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> oh, Black Beauty, she said. I'm glad I bought you rather than the rampant rabbit. <laughs> <laughs> the dragon looked at him scarily. Little Hobbit stepped up to him and said, Hello, I'm Josh Weddercombe. <laughs> I'm not doing it <laughs> <Come on. laughs> What big eyes you have, Grandma, said Little Red Riding Hood. Yes, said Grandma. I'm off my tits on methamphetamine. <laughs> you do not like green eggs and ham? Well, tough. This is a Weatherspoons. <laughs> Mr. Toad, Ratty and Badger all went on an adventure in the motor car. Then Mr. Toad accidentally said something racist on camera and was on his final warning from the BBC. <laughs> I bet you wish you were like me. I fall over all the time and I never hurt myself, said Mr. Bounce. Oh, fuck off, said Mark Cavendish. <laughs> <laughs> And behind the jumpers and the coats, at the back of the wardrobe, there he was, Julian Assange. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 
I'll huff and I'll puff and I'll blow you for five pounds. <laughs> Well, what should we call our baby, said Mr. Dizzy. Ooh, let's think, said Miss Rascal. <laughs> Spot wondered why he'd been placed into the sack with the brick. But either way, this was going to be the best trip to the canal ever. <laughs> <laughs> the Fat Controller went on a business strategy course. And from then on, he wanted to be known as the horizontally gifted chief operations manager. <laughs> well, Cinderella, she said, I'm your fairy princess, Princess Monaco of Kent. <laughs> Charlie couldn't believe he was being allowed into the chocolate factory. His girlfriend had been dead against it for years. <laughs> it was maybe because Mr Tickle could reach around doorways and through windows that he came to the attention of Operation U-Tree. <laughs> And then you just have to try and pay your mortgage off before you die. Good night, son. <laughs> Unlikely things to hear in court. We, the jury, have yet to reach a final verdict, but we would like to have a guess. Is it Mrs Peacock with a candlestick <laughs> in the library? <laughs> the defendant is, as you can see, an evil man with a black heart. But nice, firm buttocks. <laughs> the Guildford Four and the Birmingham Six were miscarriages of justice. But S Club Seven must remain in prison. <laughs> <laughs> if I'm guilty of anything, it's caring too much. And embezzlement. Embezzlement? <laughs> Embezzlement and caring too much. That's that's all I'm gonna be off. It appears that we have a hung jury. Thank you, gentlemen. You can put your trousers back on now. <laughs> okay, Mr. Pistorius, there will now be a toilet break. Don't anybody else go in there! <laughs> Before I pass down this sentence of death, how about a selfie? Oh my god, your death face is so random. <laughs> <laughs> you are accused of stealing top of the range toilet rolls. How do you plead? Quilty or not quilty? <laughs> No, Mr. Coulson, we're not going to tell you your sentence. Instead, we've left a message for you on Hugh Grant's voicemail. I am now going to pronounce sentence. Sentence. <laughs> Mr. Clapton, I put it to you that it is highly unlikely that you did not shoot the deputy given that you've already admitted that you did shoot the sheriff. <laughs> OK, uh, rock a -bye baby on the treetop. Oh, alibi. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's been a long and complex trial, so before sentencing, let's have a look at some of your best bits. <laughs> Mr. Pistorius, the court rejects your defence that at the time of the crime, you were legless. <laughs> and now, Mr. Harris, it is time for your sentence. Can you tell what it is yet? <laughs> you are accused of unnecessarily advertising a make of smoothie. How do you plead? Be careful. <laughs> OK, the next topic is things you wouldn't hear in a nature documentary. 
Watch out for crooks, because anybody wearing crooks is a bell end. <laughs> But what's incredible about the Emperor Penguin is its ability to make you look like a shit father. <laughs> <laughs> this is the most fantastic migration I've ever seen. These Romanians are moving in next door to Nigel Farrell. <laughs> <laughs> if you're in the jungle for a few months, use a leaf and some river moss from a bank. It really does feel like a lady. pliers and an awful lot of gaffer tape, but I finally got this flamingo's legs on the right way around. <laughs> <laughs> I have spent my whole life living with hyenas. It hasn't been easy, but there have been a lot of laughs as well. <laughs> The barbs that come off these tiny creatures can be very painful. This one just called me a talentless wanker. <laughs> the pack of meerkats surrounded the helpless lizard and within seconds he'd been forced to change his car insurance supply. <laughs> the comics or jesterlings all jostle for position, eager to present their humour to the large alpha male. <laughs> A badger in its natural environment, on the hard shoulder being pecked at by crows. <laughs> this uh, lioness has just had four cubs, but it's not as sweet as it looks. She's also had three brownies, two guides, and a venture scout. <laughs> and this little fella, this little bird, his head can literally turn 300 and... <laughs> That's owls, isn't it? <laughs> and now the male attempts, you know what, by putting his thingamajig <laughs> in the female's whatchamacallit. <laughs> <laughs> and here I am in the shrubbery outside the BBC Centre, and I think I've I have I've spotted one. This is extremely rare. It is it's a female panelist. <laughs> <laughs> Just one bite from this snake can paralyse the nervous system in three seconds. You'll have to excuse the trembling excitement in my voice, as I'm currently being noshed off by Bill Oddie. <laughs> <laughs> Unlikely small ads. For sale, one harp. Really, really used. <laughs> For sale, one hand glider. Don't call before two, as we're attending a funeral. For sale, engagement ring, never used, would suit heartless bitch. <laughs> Do you need a dog walker? You lazy bastard. <laughs> Comedian seeks new harp for no strings attached sex. <laughs> After leaving an abusive relationship, I'm looking for a fresh start. Contact Scotland. <laughs> For sale. Freezer. Not working properly. Would make ideal fridge. <laughs> <laughs> Flexible nanny required. My wife only does a missionary position. <laughs> For sale. Mitsuki 400AK X3S with extended cab and Vortex box with two brushes. Would suit somebody who knows what the fuck it is. <laughs> uh, 
Retired celebrity Lucky Likey seeks alternative employment. Also, for sale, wobble board, didgeridoo, and paintbrushes. <laughs> Do you enjoy moonlit walks in the park? Then you might have witnessed a murder last Thursday. <laughs> Internet troll seeks stupid, fat, whore, lesbian bitch for stimulating conversation and walks on the beach. <laughs> for sale. Book of logic puzzles. Would suit somebody who wants a book of logic puzzles. <laughs> Correction. Last week's notice was mistakenly placed in the Men Seeking Men column. But actually, I am genuinely seeking someone to demolish my back entrance. <laughs> <laughs> OK, the next topic is... On likely lines from a superhero movie. Come quick, Batman! Catwoman has just regurgitated Robin at the kitchen door again! <laughs> <laughs> he stopped us again! Damn you, lollipop man! <laughs> Hey, Storm, I got something needs blowing. <laughs> the Dark Knight rises, has a quick tug, goes flaccid again. <laughs> Spider-Man is dead, and so is Fly-Man, swallowed by there was an old lady woman. <laughs> How is my date with Spider-Man? Well, you know how the average person swallows seven spiders in their sleep? What if it's like a million more than that? <laughs> oh my God, there's a coach full of children about to fall off a bridge on the M40. Still, not to worry, I can take the M1 instead. <laughs> a gas leak at the orphanage. Sounds like a job for me. The human torch. <laughs> You are the superhero every man wants to see, girl on girl. <laughs> Help! We need to film these scenes quickly! This must be a job for cameraman! <laughs> of all the mutants, Magneto was the hardest to deal with, as he was bipolar. <laughs> Patient man. I work out every day, eat a high fiber diet, and simply outlive my enemies. <laughs> <laughs> Faster than a speeding bullet, stronger than an ox, and that's why we'd like you to piss in this cup. <laughs> They're getting away! What do we do, patient man? We wait. <laughs> Spider-Man, Spider-Man, does whatever a spider can. Help! I'm stuck in a bath! <laughs> I wonder what he's thinking. I wonder if he likes me. I wonder if I'm fat. Wonder Woman. <laughs> Is that your advice, Thor? Normally, I just cook from frozen. <laughs> <gasps> the gates to the netherworld are opening! Four! Hit them with your fucking hammer! <laughs> <laughs> Unlikely things to hear at an award show. And the Oscar goes to a prison in South Africa. Welcome to the National Taxi Driver Awards. <laughs> and the winner of Spiritualist Medium of the Year goes to... I'm getting a D. David. <laughs> Duncan. <laughs> Trevor. Trevor it is. And the Pride of Britain Award goes to... Scotland. <laughs> Uh, 
And the award goes to 12 Years a Slave for Most Challenging Work Experience Placement. <laughs> And the award for most dramatic pause and award ceremony goes to... <laughs> Sadly, he can't be with us tonight, so to collect the award on his behalf, Chief Inspector Harris of Operation U-Tree. <laughs> And the prize goes to Dawn of the Planet of the Apes. Unfortunately, Dawn couldn't be here tonight, so... <laughs> In order to collect the prize, please welcome Sharon of the Planet of the Apes. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you so much. But I just have to say that I was shit, and you should give it to Judy. <laughs> and the award for most disappointing sound effect in a TV show goes to... <laughs> This is the Identity Theft Awards, and I'm your host, Dara O'Brien. <laughs> and a spectacular entrance from Lady Gaga. She should probably cover that up. <laughs> and the winner of this year's Academy Award is St. Joseph's Academy, <laughs> press that in. <laughs> And here, at the Satnav Awards, we'd like just to take a moment to remember the people we've lost this year. <laughs> Welcome to the National OCD Awards. I've got a feeling someone's going to clean up tonight. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for awarding me Sexual Fetishist of the Year. <laughs> And let me tell you, this is going straight up my yeah. arse. <laughs> OK, the next topic is... Unlikely lines from a romantic novel. This is the last time that we can be together, he said. Aren't you going to say something? <laughs> Yes, 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 cried Alex Salmond. <laughs> As Christian Grey tied her to the bed, using some cotton stretch slacks, and then started beating her around the back with some Sicilian lemon cheesecake, she suddenly realised that he was heavily in to M&S. <laughs> It's for you, she said. My hair in a locket. Oh, fuck it. <laughs> I wanted that cough sweet. <laughs> Harold ran his hand up Connie's thigh. She giggled, made a note of it, and later on got £60,000 at a sexual harassment tribunal. <laughs> <laughs> I want your breasts, your legs. Your thighs. I'm on the phone to Nando's, love. What do you want? <laughs> he searched her eagerly with his tongue, its tip exploring every crevice, every orifice. God, he loved being a customs officer. Sarah's love made him feel like a young boy again, so he went off to find one. <laughs> she found him on Tinder and lost him on Grinder. <laughs> when she was in the shower, he went through her iPhone and found something disgusting. She came out as he was leaving. Come back! It wasn't me. They gave them free to everyone. I'd never download a U2 album. <laughs> They gazed into each other's eyes, and their thoughts were so in tune, they both thought the exact same thing. You'll do. 
<laughs> Sean knew that the love of his life had to have a good sense of humour, because while she was laughing, she wouldn't be watching her drink. <laughs> <laughs> Sean, it's not even me, for God. <laughs> at her naked body and then he looked into her eyes his heart started pounding and he felt a tingling sensation what a shit time to have a coronary <laughs> for the first time in her life she reached a shuddering juddering orgasm she had no idea that such a thing could happen if you leant against the hot point during the spin cycle <laughs> As Mr. Darcy kissed her neck, she flushed angrily. Get out! I'm having a shit! <laughs> <laughs> on likely things to hear on a news programme. As I report from my sixth day here in war-torn Syria, I think the lesson learned is that I should never have called my producer a wanker. <laughs> According to statistics, the French economy is now the weakest growing of all the economies in Europe. <laughs> Sport now, all Manchester United fans, please look away. <laughs> You've reached Al Jazeera News, which means you're only 20 channels away from actually finding porn. <laughs> Yeah, you'll never guess who's dead. <laughs> <laughs> Just time now to see what the papers say. <laughs> we will now attempt to talk to the survivors of the cliff fall. You're all right, mate! <laughs> Fire in the aromatherapy candle factory, the situation is now calm. <laughs> <laughs> and now over to our foreign correspondent. Do you speak <laughs> English? <laughs> now it's time for the news near you. Hello! <laughs> There are human remains on the bloodstained streets and the despair in the eyes of everyone you meet. Rob Beckett for BBC News, Magaluf. <laughs> there continues to be heavy shelling here. Romesh Rang and Nathan at the peanut factory. <laughs> Now it's over to our toys and games correspondent, Natasha Kaplunksky. <laughs> <laughs> and eventually the sun will go supernova, the earth will become dark and frozen, and everyone will die. That was the long range weather forecast. <laughs> Uh, to my right, uh, in my peripheral vision, Andy Parsons is showing us his penis. More on that as it unfolds. <laughs> we go over now to our vegan correspondent. <laughs> I'm terribly sorry, he appears to have gone strawberry. <laughs> And David Cameron has delivered on all his promises to the Scottish people. <laughs> Just time for a quick look at tomorrow's papers. So the Times and the Telegraph lead with industrial strife. And in the sun we can see that Caroline from Dagenham has got a terrific pair of norks. <laughs> <laughs> OK, the next topic is... Things you wouldn't hear on a medical show. I'm sorry, I know nothing about the inner workings of the human body. Honestly, hand on my heart, it's... Uh... <laughs> I'm Dr Christian, and remember, however embarrassing your condition is, 
you'll never look as weird as I do. <laughs> Health officials have shut down the village fate. Apparently, there was an outbreak of tombola. <laughs> I think we've got the balance about right here. The hospital is clean, but the nurses are filthy. <laughs> We'll be starting the procedure by numbing your breasts. No, 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 Please let me assure you, it's perfectly normal and the swelling will go down. Um, it's just that I find you really attractive. <laughs> and if you've been affected by any of the issues on embarrassing bodies tonight, think how I feel. I had to touch it. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, if you'd like to bend over, I'm just going to check your prostate. Maybe slightly uncomfortable. I'm going in now. Look! No hands! <laughs> now, our next guest, believe it or not, is both a poo and a lice inspector. Sorry, police inspector. <laughs> <laughs> of course I know what I'm doing. Give me the defibrillator. I'm going to defrib something. <laughs> Yes, uh, I'm afraid it's the big C. Yep. Jeremy Hunt is paying the hospital a visit. <laughs> this week on Embarrassing Bodies... FIFA. <laughs> I'm afraid there's been a problem with your X-ray. He's put a sex tape of you up on the internet. <laughs> This is where obese people need to step up to the plate, step away from the yeah. plate. <laughs> <laughs> so, I'm off to give blood, or as I like to call it, self-harm for a biscuit. <laughs> people say, give blood, give blood, but it really freaked the kids out on Christmas morning. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to another episode of Bush Doctors, or as I call them, Gynaecologist. <laughs> In just one week on a lad's holiday, Kevin got an SCD, had his stomach pumped and lost a finger. Legend! <laughs> <laughs> on lighter things for a sports commentator to say. And Hamilton takes the jacket flag. Give back the jacket flag! <laughs> And you join us tonight for the boxing. I really hope a fight doesn't kick off like last time. Guys, guys, can't we just talk about... Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to under-16's badminton, where the players are still laughing at the word shuttlecock. <laughs> shuttlecock. Oh, and the club has connected beautifully there. But according to World Boxing Federation rules, that's an instant disqualification. <laughs> <laughs> and Switzerland takes the gold and hangs on to it even after the Second World War is after. <laughs> he turns, he shoots, and that is a horrible end to the Grand National. <laughs> Say what you like about dressage. I couldn't give a shit. <laughs> <laughs> and Slippery Bastard is in first of all arms and legs, second belly flop boy coming on the inside. And yes, I have forgotten the swimmers' names and have resorted to funny nicknames. <laughs> <laughs> and you join me here in Helsinki for the final of the curling. And you know what that means? My career is going shit. <laughs> The referee checked his watch and realised it was given by the Brazilian FA. <laughs> He's going to have to return it. 
<laughs> the whole show. Will it be Oxford? Will it be Cambridge? Who will provide most of the new cabinet? <laughs> There's a streaker on the pitch. Two words. Hubba, hubba. <laughs> <laughs> and as they take the last bend, that is the end of the Ben Stealing Championships. <laughs> and it's the relay, and he's made a grab for the baton. Oh, that's not the baton. <laughs> but he's got a smile on his face anyway. <laughs> Rosberg makes a mistake, he runs wide into turn two! Why is he running? Get in the car! <laughs> you twat! <laughs> OK, the next topic is... Lines you wouldn't hear in a TV detective show. Next up on uh, Channel 5, a woman has a painful wrist in RSI Miami. <laughs> Of course I dusted for Prince. I'm his cleaner, and he prefers to be known as the artist formerly known as Prince. <laughs> <laughs> How did I recognise him from just his genitalia? <laughs> well... <laughs> it was the red and blue paisley pyjamas <laughs> around the outside. Do you not speak Danish? <laughs> this week, Rosemary and Time are joined by two Indian detectives. Turmeric and chilli. <laughs> You're going to arrest me for making lewd and childish innuendos? I hope you don't expect me to come quietly. <laughs> this week there's panic in midsummer as they meet their first black man. Ah, <laughs> oh, you said it was a who done it. Yeah, we arrested Hugh Dennis. <laughs> <laughs> I think I have solved it, Watson. No shit, Sherlock. <laughs> there has been a heinous crime committed on the Orient Express. Somebody has done a shit while the train was still in a station. <laughs> Leave me alone, Watson. I'm going to go back into my mind palace and have the wank of a lifetime. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The murderer has cut out the victim's tongue. Let's get that back to the lab. I've got some envelopes need licking. <laughs> now, Constable, the fact that you've had to redo the chalk outline 17 times should surely be an indication that the victim is still alive. <laughs> I shoot my gun like I shoot my load into my hand. You're under arrest, you're not obliged to say anything, but anything you do say means you'll be an actor rather than an extra and you get paid a bit more. <laughs> so you say that at the time of the murder, you were hosting Daybreak on ITV. So there's no witnesses to corroborate. <laughs> Hello, we're the fashion police. Let's see the body. Oh, blue with green. He deserves to die. <laughs> Things you wouldn't hear at a party conference. <laughs> Willkommen, bienvenue, welcome to the UKIP party conference. <laughs> the leader's speech will be signed for the hard of hearing. <laughs> ah. <laughs> 
Welcome to the UKIP party conference, and we've picked the most British place we could find. Welcome to Benidorm. <laughs> <laughs> And the good news is the polling data is in and we are just ahead of others. <laughs> good news, if you're a small mother, we're going to raise the minimum wage. <laughs> <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, please be up standing and welcome your new leader of the UKIP party. It's Mrs Chowdhury and her wife Paula. <laughs> Fellow members of UKIP, I think it is safe to say, judging by the amount of Eastern Europeans working in the kitchen here, that the soup we had for lunch was mainly piss. <laughs> As the Lib Dem leader, I say to you, go back to your constituencies and prepare your CVs. <laughs> Let me say quite categorically that this party is in favour of nuclear power. <laughs> Welcome, Liberal Democrats. The theme of our conference this year, why are we bothering? <laughs> Please come to the stage, your new Prime Minister, Mel B. <laughs> <laughs> and for the last time, for the last time, can I assure you that the NHS is safe in our blood-stained money-grabbing hands. <laughs> OK, the next topic is on likely things to hear on daytime TV. Good night. <laughs> well, welcome back to Dutch daytime TV. Next up, it's Hash in the Attic. <laughs> Hello, and welcome to The Chase. <laughs> <laughs> Long walk back, long walk back. <laughs> and I should have gone the other way. Good evening. <laughs> Sorry, good afternoon. Forgot how badly my career was going there. <laughs> Today on 60 Minute Makeover, David Dickinson gets re-sprayed with creosote again. <laughs> Thank you for watching this morning. Now put down the vodka, get dressed and go to work. Today on Jeremy Kyle, Jaden will be asking Mustafa. No, I better not do that. <laughs> Today's episode of Jeremy Kyle has just been cancelled. <laughs> Today on Jeremy Kyle, Jaden will be asking Spencer why he won't read his research paper on neutron decay in lithium isotopes. <laughs> that was worth it. <laughs> Today on Jeremy Kyle, Jaden will be asking Spencer, where is Mustafa? <laughs> Hello and welcome to Who Do You Think You Are? How dare you? I don't care if you're a 70s DJ. <laughs> <laughs> welcome back. Well, we'll see if the police catch them before they actually hand over the drugs. Yep, it's deal or no deal. <laughs> Susan asked for a distressed look in her front room, so we told her her cat had been run over. <laughs> You're watching more for. Next up, I'm gonna go with come dine with me. <laughs> <laughs> the next program has been sponsored by Dignitas. Come die with me. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
And next, I'm going to be reading out some of your texts and emails. That's what you get for not locking your phone. <laughs> Due to a misunderstanding, Flog It Saudi Arabia has been cancelled. <laughs> Hello and welcome to Loose Women. <laughs> okay, give me that round of Ed Hugh Milton! <laughs> Our final round, a little quickfire round called Scenes We'd Like to See. This is for everyone, if you can all make your way over there to the performance area. I call out ideas for scenarios we'd love to see, and the performers come in with their suggestions. OK, here we go. Things a new pope shouldn't say in his first public speech. <laughs> YMCA. <laughs> there you go. I've dreamed of this moment ever since I was a little girl. <laughs> <laughs> what a f***ing <laughs> view. <laughs> I'd like to thank my wife. <laughs> I only wish that Hitler could have been alive to see this moment. <laughs> I'm a celibate. Get me out of here. <laughs> Very good. Well done. OK, next chapel. Oh, 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 you're more oh, the Pope. Yeah, Sorry, OK, Graham. OK, still on the Pope. <laughs> I can't think of a finer way to spend the last six months of my life. <laughs> Look at the tits on that nun. <laughs> OK, next topic. The second topic is books heading straight for the remainder of bin. Paul Gascoigne's Sudoku. <laughs> <laughs> Beckham's Thesaurus. <laughs> The Ron Atkinson Diet. <laughs> My Struggle by Paris Hilton. <laughs> John Leslie's Pop-Up Autobiography. <laughs> Michael Jackson's Touch and Feel book. <laughs> Iraq's Weapons of Mass Destruction, a dossier. Next topic is <laughs> slogans the Tory party should have used in the election. Vote for us and we'll hand Thatcher over. <laughs> Are you sinking like we're sinking? <laughs> it's L'Oreal and I'm worth it. <laughs> There's a Muslim paedophile living under your child's bed. <laughs> Conservative. <laughs> okay, new topic in break. If politicians endorsed products. After you. It's L'Oreal, and I'm worth it. <laughs> Kids will just love Kablunkit. <laughs> Hello, I'm Peter Mandelson, and when I needed a mortgage, I phoned Loans Direct. <laughs> Were you injured in an accident that wasn't your fault? <laughs> On setting things to hear in the White House. Uh, as your doctor, Mr. Bush, I can assure you, you are fit and healthy. <laughs> Does your cigar taste a bit funny? <laughs> So let me get this straight. We're handing over the management of the Star Wars Missile Protection Program to Rail Track. <laughs> oh, that. That's a map of Iran. <laughs> Who's the president here, me or you? 
It's me. Shit! <laughs> no, 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 Saddam. I love you too. Come on, Tony. Keys in the bowl. <laughs> Welcome, President Schwarzenegger. <laughs> there we go. Okay, our next topic is discarded titles for the next Harry Potter book. Harry Potter is thrown in jail for wearing a hood. <laughs> <laughs> Harry Potter and the Wet Dream. <laughs> Captain Corelli's mandolin. <laughs> <laughs> Harry Potter and the Mudblood Prince in a Nazi uniform. <laughs> Harry Potter and the Chamber of Commerce. <laughs> uh, Harry Potter does Dallas. <laughs> Red Hot Muggle on Muggle action. <laughs> Harry Potter and the Child Actor's Inevitable Mental Breakdown. <laughs> <laughs> Harry Potter and the Prisoner of Abu Ghraib. <laughs> Harry Potter and the two other kids who can't act. <laughs> <laughs> OK, let's go to the next topic. Uh, things you shouldn't say to the Queen on being given your honour. Uh, did you kill Diana? <laughs> I eat corgis. <laughs> Where's that racist twat? Is he around anywhere? <laughs> oh, that reminds me, I must post that letter. <laughs> Could you sign this for me? I'll make much more on eBay. <laughs> You have no idea how much pussy this is going to get me. <laughs> Bad ways to start a party political broadcast. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> My fellow paedophiles. <laughs> Hang on, I'll be with you in a minute. <laughs> As you'll know, the football is on the other channel. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm sorry to say that it is mostly the blacks. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, I'm John Prescott. Now, I expect you're wondering why I'm the... <laughs> <laughs> I think our policies are best expressed... ...in song. <laughs> During the next three and a half hours... <laughs> now, look, we all know we're not going to win. <laughs> <laughs> Death to the West. <laughs> <laughs> Let me tell you what the voices in my head are telling me. <laughs> OK, our next topic is... Things you'd never hear a French person say. Of course, it looked hopeless, but we kept fighting. <laughs> I'd like a bottle of Burgundy and a Dairy Lee Dunker, please. <laughs> <laughs> You're English. How nice to meet you. <laughs> J'aime beaucoup, Monsieur Jeremy Clarkson. <laughs> I've just bought a wonderful little holiday home in the south of Birmingham. <laughs> <laughs> My favourite road? Well, that's got to be the A303. <laughs> uh, at nights, in many ways, it's quicker than the M4 and you get to go past Stonehenge. 
if you're going London to the West Country, it's A303 for me every time. <laughs> what a road. What a road. <laughs> And we throw that part of the animal away. <laughs> OK, our next topic is what the voices in Tony Blair's head are saying. You will obey! <laughs> you will obey! <laughs> Keep smiling, have Gordon killed. Keep smiling, <laughs> have Gordon killed. <laughs> Cherie, will you shut the f up? Okay. <laughs> oh, look, there's Cherie. That reminds me, I must post a letter. <laughs> <laughs> I like big butts and I cannot laugh. <laughs> I wonder what John Prescott looks like in hot pants. <laughs> Mustn't get a stiffy. <laughs> Damn it, got a stiffy. <laughs> Go on, lie. You got away with it last time. <laughs> Things a Wimbledon commentator would never say. Forty, thirty-seven. <laughs> Well, there is Sharapova, and I'm sure, like me, you long to have those long, moist Russian legs wrapped around your face. <laughs> is it just me, or are they just hitting it back and forth? <laughs> How wonderful to see an old British final. <laughs> well, there's a ball boy needs taming. <laughs> Advantage, Whittacombe. <laughs> and as they come to the first, it's Spanish steps over safely. <laughs> <followed by Jordan. laughs> All this grunting is giving me the horn. <laughs> In the women's game, why does the pretty one always lose to the moose? <laughs> Now, that one must be a man. <laughs> Next topic, please. TV shows that never made it to air. Hi, I'm Bill Oddy, and this is Badger Cull Live. <laughs> Complicated financial fraud, she wrote. <laughs> Terrorists say the funniest things. <laughs> yes, it's who wants to be a milliner. <laughs> Police, camera, paperwork. <laughs> Let's see if you can guess who it is in Lloyd Grossman's Through the Arsehole. <laughs> Celebrity Love Island. Oh, no, Christ, that really happened. <laughs> Welcome to the first edition of I'm a Suicide Bomber, Get Me In There. <laughs> You've been shot. <laughs> <laughs> OK, next topic is unlikely lines for the Queen to include in her annual message. Some of my best friends are black. <laughs> Been involved in an accident that wasn't your fault. <laughs> Send a rebate or the corgi gets it. <laughs> Aston Schneisel Hans mine go up in Fiora. <laughs> Look, we don't cost you 99p each. We don't cost you 79p <laughs> each. I'll tell you what, I'm a fool to myself, but we cost you 61p each, and for that I'll throw in Princess Michael of Kent. You can't say fairer than that. <laughs> the Queen is brought to you by Power Jam. <laughs> 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 
So there were these two nuns in the bath. <laughs> <laughs> Charles, you'll have to prize my crown out of my cold, dead hand. <laughs> I'm a killer. Queen! <laughs> Bad things to say on stage at Live Aid. They've put a lovely spread on backstage. <laughs> Lobster, caviar. <laughs> Let's not cancel debt. Let's consolidate it into one manageable <laughs> money. I'm Michael Howard, and this is my rap for Africa. <laughs> Whinging Africans, eh? <laughs> Hands up who finds fair trade bananas a little dear. <laughs> <laughs> A lot of people complain that there are no ethnic minorities at this gig, but no, here they are, the black and white minstrel show. <laughs> OK, the next topic is what the voices in Prince Charles's head are saying. Charles, this is the plant. You've betrayed us again. <laughs> We're going to kill your new wife too. <laughs> If I really am the father, why is he so stupid? <laughs> How much would it cost to turn Windsor Castle bouncy? <laughs> Kill a swan, they can't touch you for it. <laughs> Nazi uniform. No, that was funny. <laughs> So what if she's your mother? Just press the pillow over her face and count to a hundred. <laughs> Very good. The next topic is inappropriate things to say on winning Wimbledon. Mr. Blair, <laughs> this is for Iraq. <laughs> Three sets, no smell. <laughs> That's palm olive. <laughs> Thanks very much, but uh, I've actually come here to talk to you about Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> that Nandalone's great stuff, isn't it? <laughs> this is fantastic. In, in some way, it compensates for my lost childhood, my dysfunctional family, and the fact I'm so stressed I haven't had a period for seven years. <laughs> <laughs> to be honest, I only won because I'm pissed. <laughs> I'm delighted to have won uh, and put all the drug rumours behind me and uh, I'd just like to thank my husband for sticking with me. <laughs> it's, it's been everything, it's been amazing. Apart from the crowd, who are a bunch of assholes, <laughs> and I wish they'd stop trying to share in what is essentially my triumph. <laughs> I just got a blowjob in the dressing room from a Womble. <laughs> <laughs> well done, the winner of that was Frankie. Everyone sit down again. Come on, sit down.
fucking scalp. You disgust me.